Now, many of you are perhaps involved in the conduct of clinical trials. And uh, actually, when I was first approached with this project, my first reaction was state requirements. Well, as long as you comply with the federal requirements, then there should be no problem or no need to uh, concern yourself with with uh, state regulations concerning clinical trials. As we researched the project, uh, we started to discover that the basic foundation of uh, clinical trials, development of experimental therapies, always comes down to uh, the foundational aspect of consent and consent and the informed consent of human subjects as to whether or not they want to knowingly and with full knowledge enter into an experimental therapy that may hold great promise, uh, but also might hold great risk to them. So today, uh, uh, hopefully by the end of uh, the session, we're going to hopefully inform you um, as to what areas in state-specific regulations will affect your clinical trials. Importantly, uh, from a legal perspective, um, understanding and complying with uh, state uh, statutes will allow you to understand the risk um, and liability of complying with such state-specific knowledge to uh, the clinical trials. Being said that having a properly consented uh, human subject um, is always going to be paramount to the success of your study and also any subsequent uh, liability that may arise when a clinical trial, um, for whatever reason, goes wrong. In the uh, study guide, what we did is we assembled the contact uh, list for departments of public health, uh, the departments of pharmacy, the departments of medicine, and all of the respective states. One should keep in mind that while the federal framework and the federal regulations are pretty exhaustive governing the conduct of clinical trials. The healthcare professionals that are undertaking uh, those clinical trials are always licensed by the state, the state board of pharmacy, the state board of nursing, uh, the state board of medicine, and in many states, a lot of those departments have merged into centralized departments of public health in recent years. The interesting thing about the state regulation of clinical trials is that oftentimes there are strategic advantages for conducting studies in certain states. And often states trying to um, increase uh, awareness or participation or efforts to a certain disease state will often offer incentives within their regulatory framework, um, case being oftentimes oncology trials. It's advantageous to conduct those trials in certain states because of incentives within the state regulatory um, framework that allow advantages over other states. Additionally, novel therapies like stem cell therapies, certain states such as California have offered certain incentives. So certainly, California in areas of HIV therapies has certain incentives and have created a framework that perhaps allows the clinical uh, trial practitioner to navigate studies in those states perhaps a little bit easier than uh, uh, than other states. Importantly, uh, we all understand that 21 CFR Part 50 governs the content of informed consents and consenting of human subjects. I'm going to say this a hundred times today is the foundation of any clinical trial. And pretty much, if you are in compliance with 21 CFR Part 50, um, you're certainly going to comply with the consenting requirements in most states. However, there are certain states that have um, additional requirements um, as to the informed consent requirements, California being one. California has a certain uh, requirement that any participant in an experimental therapy be given um, a patient's bill of rights in addition to the informed consent requirements. 